It's really that simple. Yo, run that shit back. None of that makes sense. What, what part? Quite literally all of it. Oh, come on. It's quite sensical compared to 40k. You know, I never got that whole 40k thing. It's kind of like Star Wars. Neither did I get that whole Homestuck thing. God, I looked at that playlist once. Watching all that has got to take some dedication. Well, I didn't exactly watch it. I read it. All 8,000 pages. God damn. Well, let me tell you something. That was actually the shorter half of the series. Believe me. It gets worse. That wasn't all. How much worse can it get? Oh, right. I didn't tell you about the part where Stryker fought Flowey from Undertale and Benny from Batman in the equivalent of hell. <sighs> Sorry, my, my mistake, man. What the fuck did I just hear? The sound of the years 2016 to 2018. 2016 must have been wild. I don't remember it all too well. Look on the bright side, we had Doom and Titanfall 2 that year. True, true. Did I also tell you about the part where Stryker is hunted down by a mercenary with Papyrus's head with a scar age? What the fuck? Oh my god. That's horrible. That's genuinely awful. Who could have made this? This utter monstrosity. Are you seeing this? I'm seeing this. Are you seeing this? Here's what happened last time. Previously on Scott the Great, we followed protagonist Striker Eureka from the hidden Indian Ocean in his quest to kill U.S. Senator Armstrong. Played a match of lethal company. You Brandon actually didn't even recruit him out of that. Killed a shark dad, became a New York City mole rat, and fought female Walmart Great Value Horse among the revengeance full spirit via the use of domestic terrorism. In today's episode, don't miss the escapades of punished poison python in his STD ridden PMC, a journey into literal hell hosted by Jimmy Fallon, and fight Purple V1 in his Kings of Titanfall wheelchair, prevent him from relisting the Transformers games onto all platforms. possible that this is connected to the message Vampra broadcasted across the wasteland when she was targeting the stickbot from the grid. Striker. So, right on the back of Season 3, we arrive at Gary, Indiana, where a group of devious do-no-gooders are skulking cantankerous towards their devilish deeds. We meet actual Venom Snake, who sounds like he's 10 seconds away from shitting himself. And Lance, who is a character. I mean, that's certainly something I can say about him. Let's get back on the road. Axel and Clint are repairing the bat bike when suddenly a horde of enemies called Reavers appears and they dip immediately. During the chase, Clint is able to pull off his red power plate, but he isn't able to escape the Reaver leader, Jack. But he does turn his vehicle into production to product shout. Back at the base of the Reavers, the Raven Guard, led by a Primarch Venom Snake, raid the base, killing Jack in the process and inducting the entire faction in the process. Bro is about to get that S rank for real. Hitting Vanguard Outpost, Clint gets his bike in a flashback. It's revealed that Clint actually met Skimtar Spray Paint Signal at Vanguard Outpost. It also seems that Clint has a good relationship with Ares, the leader of the outpost. Hey, what's up, Pookie Fuck your own demonic Clint! We also cut to a conversation between Lance and Regalia. I like the microtransactions. Pretty decent price gouging. Ah, yes. I knew you would. Perhaps you should see the new price on a Skull and Bones game. Regalius, what the fuck is it's this? Skull and Bones, of course. Our new $70 game with even more worse pirate gameplay than ever. What we actually did well with Black Flag. And an anti-capitalist plot that definitely isn't hypocritical in any way at all. Regalius, you can't sell a shitty fucking pirate game at $70. This gameplay is straight dollar store Victorian era multi-inch kidney stone. Nay, kidney fucking boulder. Ultra mega fucking ass. Lance, you don't understand. This is a quadruple A game. Don't you see? Our budget is so high for this and its quality is so ultra. We can sell it for... Even more than seventy dollars to every bot out there. Shut a night later, we meet Tammy, Clint's old friend and cat girl in a maid outfit, who acts as a gun store owner with a western accent. 
I'd just like to remind you all that this is a, a real show made by real people. At another store, whilst trying to sell something to a dealer, Pixel offers the Golan Goblet. The dealer tells her that what she holds is an ancient eldritch artifact that allows Nightmare Realm creatures to travel into real space. Eh, probably not that bad. During the calibration of the outpost's turrets, a raven quickly kills both guards in the room and hacks all of the turrets in the outpost off of a TI-84 graphing calculator. Also, the raven is an anime girl. During a nightmare, Pixel is cornered by the animatronics from FNAF 4, but is saved by Striker. That's right, death doesn't stop Striker, and he's telling Pixel that she needs to wake up immediately. You know, something comforting to hear from a dead person. Clint is given permission to go outside of the outpost and meet the boss for a matter of diplomacy. Clint reasonably insults and doesn't accept the offers of the angry warlord skilled in infiltration. You know, like a person. WHO GOT FUCKING ROBOTOMIZED! So anyways, the turrets get disabled and the Reavers easily cut through the outer defenses of the outpost due to the CCP robot, not to mention the fucking Predators are... are also there. Recognizing that everything is quickly going to shit, Clint and Tammy get ready to extract, but Pixel goes to fight off on the front line. Pixel kills multiple Reavers and Tammy comes in with a, with a 40mm cannon. In a fight between Clint and Lance, we discover they were brothers who were hired by the Ravens to restore order in the Wasteland. The fight between Lance and Clint continues, and so does the main battle at the central Vanguard outpost. Tammy kills the CCP robot with her bare hands, beating those DAMN COMMIES FOR GOOD- Eventually, the fight between the brothers ends, and Clint abandons Lance after he refuses to go home. Ares begins murdering every single Reaver in the outpost, but gets shot in the front of the head one time by one shooter. As they escape the outpost, the gang is spotted by the Reavers, and just as Snake is about to fire a rocket launcher, Lance does a minor backstab just as things reach their peak, and Tammy and Clint attempt to hold off effectively dozens of fucking Reavers. Clint counters a rocket made by Snake, killing both the big boss and himself in the process. The entirety of Vanguard Outpost is a wreck, and Pixel is the only one of the main cast actually alive. Uh, where is Striker and Shift, you may ask? Good question. Uh, they're in hell. XY chromosomes. It's Omzi Nator, coming at you live from the bowels of urban Los Angeles, currently fighting Bendy from that one game that was popular in 2018. So, Pixel attempts to destroy the Golden Cup, but it ends up using the Feedbacker. Going around the wasteland, Pixel attempts to find a person who knows how to destroy the cup. She fails, except it seems there is one person who knows how to help her. Wow, I really hate all these callbacks to season. Hey, you little dumbass, fun dip, dark shadow, boo knees, short stack, fulgrim looking. I heard you have an exorbitant level of interest in callbacks to the previous video. These mildly comedic voice cameo skits make me want to develop an addiction to melatonin to sleep through them faster. Would you still love the melatonin pills if they were worms? Give me a truck. I don't remember giving you the fucking prompt to learn a G1 license. I have benzodiazepines. Do you want any? We also learned that Cecilia was once the queen of somewhere in the UK. Doesn't matter where, it was probably the UK because that explains the, uh, the German bedtime stories that turned her shadow mode. Also, Regalius has been building a massive military force, one that the duo encounters on a drive. She wins because she can, like, deflect bullets or some shit. By the way, it turns out Stryker and Shift may not have died, but rather they were dragged into the sewers of Santa Monica when they were offered a $25 Steam gift card from Cecilia. In Hell, we find a menagerie of things all popular in 2016 and 18. Or Source of Madness enemy, you know, those also work. Pixel and Vampra summon themselves to Hell by using the Golden Goblet. Fight a couple knights and... Good writing is fucking hard, man. Blah blah blah, some mech is being developed at the Great of the- <laughs> Bendy and Flowey, who are servants of Cecilia, are hunting down Striker and Shift, and they get some real heavy hitters dialogue-wise. I mean, it's better than my comment. Pixel finds Striker by the indomitable, uh, stickbot spirit. Ember joins Cecilia to get a scythe. Please let this video be fucking over! A large fight ensues and it involves like a lot of telepathy and the throwing of mini churches. Pixel tells Cecilia she's a schizo, and her medication turns her bipolar. So anyways, she, Flowey, and Bendy fight the Landlord of Hell, because she is no longer the Queen of Hell, and it goes very badly. With the gang escaping Hell, Cecilia and Vampira are dead for good. Now that's all that's left is to go back to the good old-fashioned sovereign state values upon which we used to rely. see Regalius and his crew searching the rubble of the destroyed temple, only to find nothing because the crew moved like up uh, two kilometers away in a minute. 
Also, Megatron is back from an even worse Bayformers film this time. After a large firefight between the main cast and the grunts, the traitors make their way into a sewer entrance, with it appearing to be the main base of all the new rebellion within the grid. Oh, and uh, also, it turns out that while the main cast was gone, they were labeled as enemies of the state. Hey, Striker. Hey, sh My sister got kidnapped as a child and then got turned into a child soldier for the Democratic Republic of Congo. That's some strange timing to tell me that shit. An announcement comes on with Regalius calling in every single mercenary in the wasteland, and Megatron hijacks it to announce he's taking hostages, and that Striker must face him to save them. Before leaving, Striker gets a complete perk rework, and effectively becomes a walking wallet representation of the U.S. defense budget, with the help of some live fire training featuring the Black Mesa research team. He also gets a single bullet, used for his railgun, that is effectively a thermonuclear bomb powered by his own life force. Striker goes out to fight Megatron, constantly getting on the move and spamming the use of his jetpack, much like any effective Ultra Kill player, while the fortress of the grid are being assaulted by Pixel. They're saving the hostages. It's revealed that Striker isn't doing so hot, so he pulls out his nuclear round and turns Megatron into the kindergartners I met while speeding in the nearby preschool parking lot the other day. Striker, with his life force drained, is dead. The heart of the rebellion, flatlined within 20 seconds. A literal killer of extra-dimensional beings and wasteland overlords. Gone. Why'd you have to go off and be a hero? <laughs> oh. Were it some weak-ass stiff-bought civilian. Back at the Rebellion base, the traitors start interrogating General Tarsanus, revealing that the hostages got recaptured, and that he was also responsible for leading the re-education camps during the Great Stuckbot War containing Shift's sister. Yeah. The rebels, aware that the best chance to defeat Regalius is now, start loading up and go to meet the general himself. And also, mercenaries. A lot of mercenaries, including fucking Iron Man. Meanwhile, Stryker trades Tarsanus back to Regalius to get back the hostages. Regalius doesn't uphold his end of the deal, and, as a result, gets soloed by the demigod murdering sheriff. Also, Goldie is Shift's sisters. My god! What a twist. Stryker is about to win against Regalius, except there's just one small negligible minor problem you see for the last few months it turns out that regalius's team has been working on an ultimate weapon one that striker is about to get very close and personal with i've waited a long time for this striker with all his weapons destroyed goes right in mode manages to overpower raptus and beats him to death why because motherfucker Striker Regalius, without any money left to pay his mercenaries, gets gutted to have his battery sold on the market as an alternative. A year later, the grid is stable. Shift became the chief technology officer, Pixel became the president, and Striker, finally, finally, my boy, pulls a girl, except the Joker comes by because my man can't catch a break. So after all that, I know what you're thinking. What?